coming in for a landing. Eat it, Drake. I am Kyle Scott, CrossingBroad.com. Broadlines, I'm not here to tell you who to bet. I'm here to tell you why and how. If you like what you see, subscribe down below. Give us a like on Instagram. Be sure to leave a comment because we are about to talk about Sixers, Raptors, Game 7 for all the marbles. Resounding, resounding Game 6 win from your team, your town, no longer grudgingly, Philadelphia 76ers. Let's get into the lines, the trends, the keys, and we'll see if we can make some sort of a call for Game 7. First off, Sixers, heavy dogs, not unexpected. They actually opened at plus seven at points bet in some places. That has since come down. DraftKings Sportsbook told us this morning that 93% of the early money, 93% was on the Sixers at six and a half. So you've seen that line come down. Now that is not completely unheard of. The local teams, Philly, New York teams at New Jersey Sportsbooks tend to get most of the action, but 93% even in the early money is a lot. So that's why you've seen this line movement. I suspect this ends somewhere and lands around five and a half before game time. Money line, plus 200 money across the board. FanDuel was plus 220. As we're recording this, the line's moving. I think that's actually come down to about 205, 210 right now. And then we got the total. This is interesting. Game opened at about 206, 206 and a half. It's come up everywhere to 209, which is still below where the last few games have been played. We had totals going back to game four, game three, game four, 217, 214, then two straight at around 211, depending on where you looked. Found an equilibrium in games four, five, and six in that 211, 214 range, and yet the game opened at 206. You see slightly lower scoring in game sevens. It's come back up, giving you some coverage. We'll circle back to that in a second. Let's get to the trends. On the total, the under is 26 and 19 in game sevens, going back 2005. And when the closing total is under 210, as it looks like it's going to be here, the under is 24 and 17. This is why I kind of do like the under in this game. Again, equilibrium between 211 and 214, and yet it opened at 206. That's telling you something. I think the last two games to get into that total, both games were over 211, 214 points. To get there, you need a garbage time, late scoring surges from the Raptors in game five, the Sixers last night. So that means you know, these games were effectively played in the under. I like the under here. You're getting some umbrella coverage. Let's talk about some trends. They're not good for the Sixers. I'm not going to lie. They're not good. 20-25 against the spread on the road in road teams in game seven. Check this out. 12 and 24 road underdogs of four or more in game seven and 10 and 18 road underdogs of four to seven points as the Sixers are. And that is a yuck pie. Let's talk about some trends for the Raptors. There they are, predictably good. Home teams in game seven, favored 24 and 19 against the spread, 31 and 12 straight up, 12 and seven against the spread when favored by six or more. And check this out, 17 and two straight up in game seven, home teams when favored by six or more. You really yuck, yuck pie. You know what? Screw the trends. Screw the trends. This one, I think, goes on field. Let's talk about some of the keys to the game. Joel Embiid, his presence is felt even when he's not dominant on the offensive end. Plus 40, 40. That is easily a season high. Wasn't fully dominant offensively. Defensively, he impacts the game. When he goes out and Boban comes in twice, the Raptors go on runs. Even Joel Embiid, when he's not at 100%, which he is rapidly taking off, ascending to, He's huge in the game. I think he's going to be the healthiest he is in the series. This is the game where he makes his true impact, at least the first one since game three. Ben Simmons, his balls, they dropped in game six. Speaking of those balls, that's three of them. I don't know why the marker's doing that. The Raptors, they need to get three-pointers. Check this out. Games four and five, 10 and 16 three-pointers, respectively. They need contributions other than Kawhi. They need guys like Green. They need Kyle Lowry to hit three-pointers, give them those big scores. They missed early in game six, allowed the Sixers to get up, and the Sixers front run pretty well. So what's our call here? Look, I'm not messing with the spread. No surprise, it's in the six-point range. That's where we were before game five. We traded blowout, so we're right back to where we started here. I think what you've seen in this series is that these two teams are relatively evenly matched. 
Their great effort can blow them out. Their great effort can blow them out. The thing is, the Raptors, two of their wins required the Sixers to have a very, very unhealthy, ill Joel Embiid. To me, when you look at this money line and you see the Sixers, teams you could argue that are a toss-up, the Sixers at plus 200, plus money, and you're going to have a healthy Joel Embiid, that's your bet. Did the Sixers win? I don't know. Do they cover? I don't know. Where's your best value? Where's your best bet? Somewhere right here. You can get them plus 210, plus 215. If you see it at plus 20, if you're able to grab it, take it. I think that's the best bet. You get two to one on your money, but I kind of like the under here. Less certain because this line movement's a little weird, but I like the under going into the game. I'll take the under with the added umbrella coverage. I'll take the Sixers outright. Bring on, wait, give me the money, Craiger. Give me the money, all the money. All the money, all the money. I fell on the money line. I'll take the Sixers, bring on Wes Eden, bring on Mallory Eden and the Bucks. Underdogs, Craig, bring it in. Ruff, 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 ruff.